I knew it would be big, but I don't think I realized how big until I made it. Hello, hello, I am Shay and I like to make things and this time we are making Cruella's trash dress. For those who haven't seen Cruella, this dress comes from a scene where a bunch of trash is dropped in front of the villain's house. Cruella rises from the trash in this trash dress and then rides away on the trash truck with a giant trash train blowing in the wind. It's incredible. It's my favorite dress in the movie. I love it, so we're gonna make it. I'm going to make this dress as accurate to the original as possible, which means yes, it will be ridiculously long and I will do my best to find some sort of trash truck or truck that I can ride on. So the first thing with any project, we have to break it down and see what we're actually making. I am going to scour the internet for as many reference photos, behind the scenes photos that I can of this dress and just see what it's made of. One thing about this dress is there are no full body references. This is one of the only photos I found that shows the bottom of the dress and it's actually a bit of a high low. So I am gonna have to do a bit of creative interpretation of what the front of the dress looks like. I think I'm gonna base it off the information that I do have, Corella style and the inspiration photos that I was able to find. So that is the finished sketch. Breaking it down, this dress isn't too complicated. It's just big and made of a bunch of layers. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the corset and make the skirt. For pretty much all of my like corset bustier tops, I always use this pattern. It's my orange lingerie. It's the best like cupped bodice pattern. Unfortunately though, it isn't a full corset. It's only the top half. But I like this pattern so much that I think I'm just gonna extend it. This is what it looks like all patterned. It's not perfect, but I think it looks very corset-like. And now I just need to chop it up. Now I can use this as a pattern for my real fabric. Corsets are typically made with at least two layers, an inner structural layer that helps to support the shape and an outer pretty layer. I got this nice pretty satin to use for the outside and under that I'm gonna make a structural layer with this canvas fabric that'll just give it a bunch of strength and be somewhere I can put all the boning in. First, I use the pattern to make the underlayer. It's not perfect, but it's a solid underlayer and the top layer is gonna look a lot prettier. To make the pretty outer layer, I did the same thing, tracing and cutting out my pattern in the pretty satin fabric, sewing my pieces together, and we've got it sewn. I think I made my overlayer like too strong, which kind of makes the underlayer irrelevant. So I'm just not gonna use that. And we're only gonna use the overlayer. So we're just gonna attach the booby cups to the overlayer, sew it all together, add our boning into this, and then call it a corset. Look at how nice that looks! This took forever to make and it still is not done, but, but it's gonna be a really good base that I can just put a lot of trash on and not have to worry about it being sturdy because she is sturdy. Since the base corset is pretty much done, we're moving on to part two of the base, the skirt. I made Billie Eilish's Met Gala dress last October-ish and I had a bunch of extra tools. So I think this will be a perfect base for her skirt. Actually, reduce, reuse, recycle. What if I just like cut up the dress I made last year? Cause it's a trash dress. It should be made from like recycled materials. Let's grab it. And welcome to my attic where I have all my costumes. This is the Effie dress. Here's Taylor Swift. I'm pretty sure that is pieces of the social distancing dress. I think this one is Billie Eilish. And here she is. I actually have not taken her out of the bag for about a year, so we'll see how she looks. Oh wow. This is her. This is what she looks like. I feel kind of bad cutting her up because she's absolutely beautiful. But I do really want this project to be somewhat reducing and reusing. I think we're coming to a compromise and instead we will be modifying the dress. Unfortunately though, even if we're just modifying it, I will have to chop the front of this dress off. All right, we're gonna go for it. Oh, that hurts, oh, that hurts. Okay, no, 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 no. The first cut has been made. She is officially now a high-low dress instead of just a big pretty ball gown. <laughs> also, just taking a moment, this sweater is super cute. And guess where it's from? Thread Up, the sponsor of this video. <laughs> if you've been 
been on this channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard me talk about ThreadUp. And if not, you've definitely seen me wear ThreadUp. ThreadUp is basically an online thrift store. I like it because it makes thrifting super easy and convenient. You can search by brand, you can filter by your specific sizes, all from the comfort of your own home. And not only is it a more affordable option for getting new clothes, but it's also more sustainable because you're shopping secondhand, you're giving these clothes a new life rather than having them just go to landfills. Here's my little haul from ThreadUp and how I styled them. First up, it's winter, so I picked up a nice winter coat. This Laundry by Shelly Siegel coat estimates retail for $267. I paid $88. I paired it with a pink beret and some cute shoes for this super cute pastel look that I think gives very winter Hallmark movie vibes, and I just love that. Next up, I got these Isabella Rodriguez dress pants. They retail for about $149. I paid $15. These are kind of dressy, so I styled them with a white crop top for a more casual look, or for a nice winter look, I paired them with a brown trench coat. I also got this Topshop cardigan. Its estimated retail is $81. On ThreadUp, I paid $24. For this look, I kept it super casual, just jeans and a tank top, but I think it's still a cute, easy style for winter. And lastly, it is fully sweater weather, so of course, we're picking up a bunch of sweaters. I got this Banana Republic turtleneck sweater for $12. Its estimated retail is $60. And I got this oversized RDI turtleneck sweater for $16.80, despite its estimated retail of about $48. But my favorite sweater was definitely this line and dot pullover sweater. Its estimated retail is $102, but on ThreadUp, it was only $13.60. I styled it with this white pleated skirt because if you tuck your sweater into your pleated skirt, you can create this really cute feminine silhouette. And if you don't know where to start, ThreadUp just added this cool new feature where you can actually thrift items inspired by these items that I just showed you in my haul. So if you saw something in this haul you liked, you can actually click the link in the description, find the item you liked, and then click shop similar to easily thrift something just like it for yourself. So if you're thinking of updating your closet for winter, definitely give ThreadUp a look. You can click the link in the description and they gave me a code. So you can use code CRESCENT30 for an additional 30% off your first order. But with all that said, let's get back to making Corella. So the base is pretty much done. Now it's just time to add all the trash onto our trash skirt. For most of this trash, I'm trying to get it secondhand. So I will be hunting around all my local thrift stores. This one's even got a bit of lace on it. Corella does have some very specific fabrics, especially on the front of her dress. I'm going to be heading up to LA and pick up the rest of my fabrics. Huh? Thank you so much. <laughs> I got my fabrics. I think the next step is to add the newspaper that she has in the front. Well, I did manage to find this newspaper fabric. Her newspaper is very specific and it's a big piece that has Cruella up on the top. In order to get that exact print, I think I have to print my own fabric, which I haven't done before, but I picked up some supplies from Joann's and we're gonna try it. So to make the actual print for my newspaper, I couldn't find anything online, but I did find another person who made their own Cruella dress and they made theirs in Canva. So I'm gonna be using as much reference footage as I can and then making the template in Canva. I'm taking the little dates from the clips of the movie. It's gonna be so accurate. I thought this would be really complicated, but you literally just put the fabric paper into the printer and then press print and voila, printed fabric. Not gonna lie, super impressed. Did not think it would work this well. The only bad thing about this method is I am limited to printer paper size. So I had to separate my newspaper into six pieces and patchwork them together with heat and bond to get the size newspaper I wanted. So proud of how this little newspaper came out. You can't really even tell that it's four pieces pieced together. It looks like a newspaper piece of fabric. Look at that. All the text is just a review of the movie Corella I found from online. I'm just gonna be hand draping this on the dress so that the text placement, the shape of it, all matches the same way that her newspaper was styled. And then I sewed it all together with itty bitty invisible hand stitches so that it would hug the bodice super closely and keep the pleats in place and you wouldn't see any stitches. Okay, I've gotta trim the top a little, but that is very Cruella. For the back closure of this dress, I'm adding a really quick corset back. To make it, I'm just pressing in grommets like I do with most of my dresses. And ta-da! And now I can just lace it up and it's a dress. This dress also has a gravity defying green piece of fabric. Even with all the interfacing I own, there is no way that I can get fabric to just hold that shape without some sort of understructure. So I built myself a rough understructure with aluminum wire, just wrapping it on my dress form into the shape that I wanted. 
It's not the sturdiest thing, but this is sturdy enough. Now I'm gonna cover in fabric. I just draped my fabric over the base, pinning it into little pleats, and then hand sewing both the fabric and aluminum structure to my bodice. I swear every project I do turns into just hours and hours of hand sewing, but it looks so nice. So with all this stuff added, the top is pretty much done. And that means we get to start on the fun part. That is right, it is time to start on the trash train. I'm excited. Since this is a trash dress, I'm really trying hard to use secondhand fabrics and be a little more sustainable in my options. So I'm taking this as the opportunity to go through all of the fabrics I own and use all my excess fabrics. This is also just a really good excuse to sort through the boxes of fabrics that I hoard. Okay, I have sorted through all my fabrics. I've got all the scraps that work. I've got a couple of these curtains that I thrifted and I think they're gonna be perfect for making the base. I can lay them out and almost create the base layer for me to put all of the trash fabric on top of. I'm basically rearranging my house to make this dress fit. Probably like 15 feet right now. Yeah, it needs to be longer. Oh yeah. At this point, I've run out of length in my house. So I'm gonna pause here on the length and start adding the trash. I started adding the trash by cutting my fabric scraps into smaller pieces and laying them all out on my base. That way I could disperse the colors and fabrics throughout the train and I could match it better to the reference photos of her skirt. And I did this for all my fabrics. I ended up using a lot of tulle because I had a lot of tulle scraps, but also because it made the dress very floofy and voluminous like hers. It's so big, I can't fit it all in frame. So we have the train all placed. All my fabrics are kind of roughly draped in the spots I want them to be. And now I just have to go through and safety pin all my fabrics together. <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm using safety pins and not sewing, that's a lot of sewing, like 20 foot train. And I do do a lot of extreme hand sewing projects but I don't hate myself that much. But also once I'm tired of this dress, I don't have to trash all this fabric. I can just unsafety pin it, toss it in the wash and use it for another project. So yeah, I just safety pinned this entire 20 foot train for a long, long time. And yes, my back does hurt. Once everything was securely pinned, that was it. Oh my God, this is a big dress. I knew it would be big, but I don't think I realized how big until I made it. It's a little too big to move in. As for how long it is, it's almost exactly four shades long and I am 5'2", so about 20 feet. I went back with the measuring tape to get the exact number. It is 22 feet. Oh my God, it's like 42 pounds. What have I created? The last touch for this dress is adding all of the little ribbons on the front. She has kind of this ribbon necklace going on and all these scattered little pieces of ribbon. It's actually little clothing labels for House of Baroness. I'm trying out a new technique, which is DIY screen printing to do this. And basically I'm gonna be making a stencil. You put that stencil on tulle, put it in an embroidery hoop and use screen printing ink to basically stencil on your letters. I was really worried if this was gonna work because it just didn't feel like it was gonna work. <laughs> But it did! And then I could just place all the clothing labels I made onto her dress and even glue the labels together to make a little bow and ribbon for her necklace. And with that, the dress is totally done! But of course, this isn't just a dress, it's a whole look. So I did my best to recreate her makeup and I put on this incredible wig that I got from Wig in the City on Etsy. And then I was ready to head to our photo shoot. So without further ado, here is my Cruella trash dress. I'm Cruella. Was super proud of how this whole look came out. If you look at them side by side, it really is just a recreation of her dress. I think all the little efforts matching and recreating colors just really paid off. And I was able to ride away on a trash truck, kinda. You can see I am riding off at the back of my mom's minivan, which is about as close as we're gonna get. <laughs> I love all the details I was able to recreate, especially the labels in the newspaper. I know some people don't really care for all the tiny details, but to me, that just makes a costume. But that's about it for this project. It was definitely fun to jump back into like cosplaying, costume making, but I think I wanna go a little weird for the next project again. 
I just got a couple 3D printers that I've been working with and I have been having fun. I'll be deciding on my next project real soon on Instagram, so hop over there if you wanna vote for the next project or subscribe and stick around here and you'll catch it when the full tutorial comes out. Again, thank you so much Setup for sponsoring this video. You can check out the link in the description to thrift your own stuff and use code CRESCENT30 for an extra 30% off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye bye.